Hi guys, Sarah here with Selmond. Now with Halloween coming up so quickly, it's time for me to start making some decorations and preparing the house for the holiday. Now, I wanted to make something using resin, so I jumped on Pinterest and found lots of great Halloween ideas, one of them being a coaster that had some little wiggle eyes in it. I thought it was adorable and I wanted to make one for myself, but I added several of my own ideas and came up with this friendly little blob coaster using googly eyes, resin, glitter, and a silicone mold. It came out simply adorable and I'm so excited I'm going to make another one in purple. That way I'll have this adorable little set of Halloween blobs. It's so much fun to do and resin is really pretty easy to work with. There's simply no end to the things you can do using this medium and I'm sure you'll love working with it as much as I do. So sit back, enjoy this video and if you're interested in purchasing any of the products that I have shown, the, the links will be in the description below. Today we're going to make a fun Halloween coaster that you can set your drinks on and keep your table safe. So what I'm going to be using is the silicone mold that I have and it has several of the um, geode or agate shapes in it, just kind of a free form. And we're going to use that. Um, we are going to use some googly eyes. I picked these up at Walmart. It's got all different sizes in the same bag. And I got to tell you, I have bought so many bags of googly eyes. I have no idea where these suckers go. They disappear on me every time I need to use them. I have to go buy more, even if I haven't opened the last pack I bought. I have no idea where they go. Okay, you're going to need some green glitter. And this is just Recollections brand. I'm going to be using this glow in the dark pigment and I got this on Amazon. It came in this box with 12 different colors of glow in the dark pigment in it. And it also came with this little black light so you can actually see how they work. Okay, the last thing I'm going to need is some resin dye and I'm going to pull out a green and you can also use alcohol inks if you have them. I do not have a bright enough green to do what I want to do in the alcohol inks. Let's see what I can find. Here we go, an emerald green. Alright, so the next thing I need to do is mix up a batch of my resin and then we will be ready to go. Now this is going to take um, layers of resin, so this is going to be a little bit longer project. So if you're going to be making more than one, um, do all the steps for all of them at the same time. All right, I have my resin all mixed up now and I have my respirator mask on so if I sound muffled that would be why. What I'm going to do is just pour this first layer out into my mold here that I'll be using. Okay, and I will leave a link to resin in the description below just in case you don't have any resin if you haven't used it before. This is a really simple first project for you and a lot of fun. The silicone molds are not expensive and it's just a lot of fun to do. You can personalize resin any way you want to and I have just been in love with resin lately. It is such a creative medium. Now, if you're going to use it much, you do want to take precautions, such as wearing a respirator mask, because it can cause allergies and breathing issues for some people. And these days with COVID, you don't want to bring on any more breathing issues than you have to. Alright, now, I've got that pretty much into all the nooks and crannies there. Now what I'm going to do is get my heat tool and I'm going to blow out any of these little bubbles that are in here. Now if you don't have a heat tool, this is an industrial one. You can use the a craft heat gun that you can pick up at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, or Michael's, anywhere like that. Um, it will blow off the bubbles. You can also use a spray bottle with some alcohol in it to help you if you don't have a heat gun.
Okay, there we go. And that heated it up. It blew out all those bubbles. Now what I have to do is just let this first layer set and dry, which will take, we have to do it till it's about tacky, which could take six to eight hours, maybe more, depending on the area you live in, the humidity, the temperature, a lot of different factors. Now for that, I did use a half ounce of resin for this first layer, if you're wondering how much I used. So we'll go ahead and let this dry, and I will be back. Now that our resin is tacky, it is not completely hardened yet, um, but it is tacky. So what I'm going to do... Okay, now that I have my resin mixed and I've just poured it back in here again, I'm going to go ahead and I'll work around gently, very gently, and push it around into all the edges again. Just like I did before, and then I will hit, hit it with the heat gun again to burst all the bubbles. And then we're going to start placing our googly eyes. Now we'll be placing the googly eyes um, so that the backs are facing us because this will be the bottom of our coaster. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with the heat gun now. All right, and now for the fun. Okay, and see over here, I've just dumped out all the googly eyes, and I'm just going to start placing them randomly into our resin. And the reason we put that first layer of resin down is so that they don't poke through onto the top. That little guy went upside down, that's okay. We'll just flip him over here. We can get him up. There we go. Okay, that is not gonna hurt anything. All right, now we'll just let this set up again, and I will come back in the morning, and we will add the third layer of resin. All right, guys, it's the next morning. This is nice and hard, and our eyeballs are all stuck in there, so we're going to move on to the next step. All right, I'm going to mix up some more resin, and always, when mixing resin, you need a cup preferably two cups, um, so you measure equal amounts of each. But I, since these have such great markings on them, I go ahead, I don't know if you can see that, but these are like medicine style cups and they have these great markings on them, so I go ahead and use these so I know exactly how much resin I'm pouring um, in each layer. You have to be really careful because if you mess up one and over pour, you could mess up your entire ratio and it won't dry correctly. But that's how I do it. I just pour really slowly and carefully. And you need a popsicle stick or craft stick as they're called these days um, to go ahead and stir the resin. I use art resin um, right now. Uh, being new to this, I've been trying out some different resins. So I've used, I started out using the Alumalite because that's what you can pick up at the craft stores most easily. A lot of good things have been said about art resin. I decided to try it. Um, it seems to me, in my experience, that art resin takes a little bit longer to cure. And um, so I'm not sure if I like that. I can't move quite as fast with it. It also seems to be a little bit thinner at the time you mix it, which means you have to wait longer if you need a thicker resin for whatever project you're working on. The other thing you need is a mask and um, I'll include the links for all these in the description below 
Uh, you always want to be sure you wear a mask because especially if you're heating up the resin at all, it can affect your lungs. So always be sure you wear the, the right pr product protective equipment. I always use these um, is it polypropylene cups and to mix and I use those because with resin they're reusable for once or twice and I'll show you why. Because as the red resin hardens in the cups, it's in there, but I can work gently around these cups and look at this. Oops. The resin just pulls out so nice and neat and you can reuse the cup. All right, now aluminum light and art resin both have a 50 50 mixing ratio you always want to be careful when using resin because they're not all 50 50 but these these two brands are and i'm just going to go in and very carefully measure out how much i need and i'm doing a thicker layer here so i'm going to do a full ounce which means a half ounce of each of my part A and part B. If you get the sticky on your fingers, like I forgot to put my gloves on, so I just spray, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Just spray some of that on my fingers and wipe it off. Right, now I'm going to put my gloves on like I should have done to begin with. All right. Now I'm just going to start mixing. You're going to want to mix for three minutes and you want to mix slowly so you don't get too many air bubbles in. If you get, if you mix too quickly, you will get a lot of micro bubbles in there, which will render your resin cloudy and it's almost impossible to pop those bubbles with heat or alcohol. So I'm going to go ahead and just stir this for two or three minutes and we'll be back when it's all ready to go. Now that my resin is all mixed up and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and add my emerald green resin dye. And for this, I'm going to add several drops. I want it to be a darker green. I don't want it to be real transparent. I went back several times during the mixing process and added a few more drops of dye at a time and I did this until I was happy with the color. I think I added about 15 or 20 drops and it's always better to have to go in and add more than add too much because then you can't take it back out but you can always add a little bit more until you're happy with the final color. Next I'm going to go ahead and add some emerald green glitter to my cup and mix that in. Now it's time to add my green glow-in-the-dark pigment powder to my resin and I'm going to go ahead and add two or three scoops of it because I want this to have a nice bright glow when the lights are out. I think it's going to be really cute to have this friendly little blob glowing in the dark. So I'm going to mix that in real thoroughly and then we'll test it out with the little tiny black light that they included in the pigment resin kit. I decided I wanted to try to add a little more shimmer to my blob that you could see during the day so I'm adding some green mica powder into the resin and we're going to mix that in real thoroughly as well. At this point I'm hoping I'm not adding too much to this but fingers are crossed this is going to come out just as cute as it is in my head. Now it is time to add all this shimmery, glittery goodness into our mold. This is the final layer of resin and I can't wait till this dries because I really want to see how cute this little blob creature came out.
Now, for the first two layers, I showed you how I used the heat gun to pop the excess bubbles in the resin, but here I wanted to show you a close-up of what happens if you spray it with 91% isopropyl alcohol. All the action you can see, all the movement in the resin, that's all those little bubbles rising to the top and popping. So this is absolutely a good way to get rid of some of those extra bubbles. And I just wanted to be sure you could see that that actually does work as well if you're not comfortable using the heat gun or if you just don't have one. One other thing that I wanted to show you is that it's very important with resin since it begins as a liquid that you have your work area completely leveled where you set it to dry. Um, so you want to level it front to back and side to side. Here I'm using a large tile. I stuck paper under one end and on the back end I used two large popsicle sticks and that's in order to get those uh, levels as accurate as possible overnight let's go ahead and take a look at our finished product All right and there we go isn't that adorable that's so much fun for Halloween now I'm going to go ahead and do a couple finishing steps on this uh, just to get it ready to become a usable coaster the first thing I'm going to do is sand down these edges a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, there's a little bit of a lip here on the edge. So we're gonna sand that flat. This will be the bottom, so I'm not really worried about it. Then I'm going to cut a piece of felt just to go around the inside of it so that it won't scratch any surfaces when we sit it on our tables and it is ready to hold your drinks. How fun would this be in a few different colors setting it out for Halloween? You guys have a great day, and I will see you next video. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please be sure to hit that like button, as well as share it with friends who may also enjoy it. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button, and when the notification bell pops up, be sure you hit that as well so you never miss a video. And, as always, have a great day and stay crafty.